Okay, I wanna tell you guys a story. It's May of 2015, I'm 12 years old, and I'm on the B team for our local travel ball organization. It was game one of a double header, and it was the first inning, and I was up at bat. I swung first pitch and made perfect contact with my favorite bat of all time, the bright orange Mako. Up until this point, I really didn't think baseball was my sport. I didn't have a lot of success in it, and I honestly wasn't really that good. I always made the B or even C teams for travel baseball and all-stars, so I didn't think of myself as like one of the top tier players, and I wasn't sure if I ever even could be. Anyway, that ball, it soared over the fence left center field here at Foss Wasson Field and that was my first ever career home run and I could point to that moment and say it really changed the trajectory not only of my baseball career but of my life I know that sounds kind of like whatever but I'll explain more it'll make a lot more sense in a bit but we have another location we have to go to so let's head there right now Since I started making videos, I've had questions about where I played, who I had offers from, how hard I threw, and everything in between. So in this video, I'm gonna explain my entire baseball career, the ups, the downs, major wins and losses. I got injured, I quit, I came back, I got college offers, some even being D1 offers, and pretty much obsessed over baseball for about eight plus years. So here it is, my entire baseball story. Daniel Sarman, 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 Sarman. What's going on YouTube? My name is East Arm. Today I've got my first episode of Road to Night. Go to school at Bridgeton Academy, which is a prep school up here in Maine. I know you guys know I usually do all those little like animations and the text on the screen and the blah blah blah. This one's gonna be a little more like my old style. I used to do kind of more like vlogs. I have my camcorder that you might have seen footage from. I taped it to the side of my car. We're gonna be fighting against daylight here because uh, it gets dark at like four o'clock in New Hampshire in the winter. But we're gonna try our best. Oh uh, man, this is cool. I haven't been here in like 10 years. I remember right here, right in that spot, we got our jerseys for the B team when I made All-Stars, and I was so mad. I was like, I don't want these jerseys. I don't want to be in the B team. I remember one time my dad was throwing me BP in that cage right there, and he hit me, and I started, like, on accident, I started to cry. And then my friends came by, and I remember being like, I have to, I have to man up, and I, <laughs> like, stopped crying. That's another funny memory right there. Okay, so this is Courier Field, and then over there is Walsh Field. I don't even know if I'm in frame right now. Well, obviously, as you guys can see, there is no baseball field now. So this is where Walsh Field used to be. That's kind of sad, actually. I haven't been down here in a while. Rip Walsh. Fun fact, I played the last ever game here at Walsh Field when I was 12. They tore it down like two days later. I remember I pitched that whole game. It was six innings and I think I had like 10 strikeouts or something. I remember it being a really good game. I had already not made the all-star team at that point. I knew I wasn't in and I realized like, oh, like I think pitching, it's kind of my thing. Like I think I like, I want to be a pitcher. Yeah, so we won the championship that year. It was a big deal, really cool, exciting. And then they tore down the field and now there's just that field left. Oh, and that home run I was telling you guys about earlier. In the next three months, I went on to hit like 12 more, I think, and then through more shutout innings that I'd ever had in my life. I kept like a really detailed log of stats for every single game. So according to my 12 year old self, so let's just put a little disclaimer there, my batting average for the year was 378 with six home runs. And I hit, I guess, six or seven more in travel ball, 44 Ks and a 1.4 ERA. Yes sir, yes sir. Again, I don't know how accurate those were. I totally could have made them sound a lot better. Cause I literally, it's just me. No one else took the stats. Okay, so again, about that first home run, that unlocked a lot of confidence in me that I never had before. I never really got cut, but I would just make like the second or third best team. So I was like, ah, like I love baseball, but it doesn't seem to love me back. And I didn't feel like I was that good. Again, I was 12. Like, what did I know? But that's how I felt. So that year that I was just reading, I did not make the all-star team that year. I made, I made the B team. So the A team was like the 12 best players. They went on to the Cal Ripken World Series. And I remember being so upset when I saw their dope, like New England uniforms. They were like blue and red. They had these cool stripes on them. I remember being in my room at 12 years old, looking at the picture of their jerseys and just crying. It was really sad, but it's a core memory. I remember that night I was just like, Never again. I remember my 12 year old self. Very formative memory for me. Even at that age, I still, I remember how it felt. So let's head up the road to Exeter High School. Let's go. All right, so this is the JV field and I'm filming on the camcorder. I have to switch that. Ah, much better. See what I did, the little transition? It was pretty cool. So like I said, I played here when I was a freshman in high school, but even more uh, noticeably, I don't know what the word is. More notably, that's the word. More notably, I filmed a lot of my early videos here. Yeah, again, very, very nostalgic. I didn't expect to be like, I just remember throwing against this fence, dude. Cause I'd spend so much time doing plyos and bands and like no one wanted to wait for me. And it was just easier, so I would just throw into that fence. I'd film it sometimes for content, but mostly it was just for me. Um, like just to get my training in. Freshman year, I have a ton of video throwing on that mound. Obviously, I actually used to hit, by the way. I did. I hit tanks freshman year. I think I 
hit fifth. Spring of 2018, I was a freshman in high school. While our game was played on this field, I was usually like probably like 78 to 82, I'd guess. In the summer, I think I hit 83 a couple times, but it was mostly, I threw kind of hard compared to all the freshmen, but on varsity, I would have been like kind of middle. But then next off season, I had two goals. It was one, I wanted to hit 90 miles an hour, and then two, I wanted to commit to a D1 school. So I was saying sophomore year, I want to be like that guy. So all off season, I was training at this gym down in, in Seabrook, which is like 20 minutes from here. So that's when I started training with Carson, who's a pitching coach, and then Logan, who's a, like a personal trainer. And they were kind of like mentors to me. They've been mentors to me since I was like, what, 15 years old at that time. I'll show you guys my old, like every year in the new year, I'd write my goals down for the next year. And it was usually like YouTube related and then baseball related. This is what I was talking about. I don't know where I got this, but it was an ACC network. Oh, this is August. This is before freshman year of high school. 1,000 plus subscribers, 300 views of video, no more than three days in between uploads, better thumbnails, and stay confident in my skills. That was good. Uh, so my goals for the 2019 season at this point were fastball 83 to 87, sub two ERA, make varsity, start a game on varsity. These are all, I'm, I'm going through all different goals. This is crazy. Very goal-oriented person. So like I said, this was the freshman and JV field. And I have a lot of memories on varsity. So let's go over there. This is where we played all our varsity games. Junior year, we did not play because of COVID. Senior year was like not even a real year. But sophomore year, I do remember pitching a lot on this field. Um, bullpens and games and all that stuff, obviously. So sophomore year, I had a really good high school season and I was playing on a really good travel team uh, called NEB, which is Northeast Baseball. It's like one of the bigger programs out here. I threw a lot of innings during high school ball. And then summer, my shoulder started to hurt. My velo was going down a little bit. I was like 82 to 84 around then. Lefty, 82 to 84, decent curveball. We were down in Georgia at the WWBA. And I remember I pitched five innings. My arm was kind of bothering me. Next day I went out to play catch, playing catch my buddy, and then pop, just my rotator cuff, tore it. I just threw when I shouldn't have thrown and it really hurt. I couldn't lift my arm up and I was pretty much done for like six to eight months at that point, which was very difficult. If you guys have been injured before, you know how just mentally is very difficult. Physically, obviously it's very difficult. Okay, let's head home. We can talk more about that. Show you guys this too since we're home i've had these all up in my room since i, I got a 2019 2018 90 90 miles an hour so i wanted to hit have yet to hit it uh i'm not done yet we'll talk about that later in the video but i got a bunch of like goals and stuff on the wall got this from my old podcast set okay cool so let's finish the story so spring of 2019 like i said i was going into my junior year tore my rotator cuff it was looking really bad for a while like if you look at those old videos i just like could not tell my body how to throw a baseball. It was just like protecting my shoulder, which makes sense. It's like a natural thing for your body to like, you know, want to protect something that was injured, but it just took so long to get back to like, even just feeling confident in throwing. But I was obsessed. I really wanted to get better, man. Like all those goals that I read before, um, that, I mean, those are like in the midst of me recovering from that. I was like, I'm gonna hit 89, I'm gonna hit 90, I'm gonna hit 91 then, and then I'm gonna 405 deadlift, whatever. Like I had all these different goals, even when I couldn't lift and couldn't throw because I was just that obsessed with like getting to that point. Cause I feel like it was, I was on the right track and it got taken away from me. So I was like that much more motivated to just go 110% and get that back. 2020 rolls around, COVID obviously happens and that's right around when I was starting to throw bullpens again, like March, April of 2020. Got a ton of footage from back then, unfortunately of me throwing like 77, 78. And I was like 17 at the time. So like, it was just a struggle, man. I was, I, was, I remember leaving like bullpen sessions. I would, I would show up an hour early, get my warm up in, throw 77 and just be like almost in tears walking back to my car. Cause I'd like put so much time obsession into this and I just feel like I wasn't getting back what I deserved but you know like it all kind of worked out as we know now but at the time I was just like so worried that like my dream was over like I wouldn't I wouldn't go to a d1 school I wouldn't ever throw 90 um, it's two things that haven't happened yet but like I was so obsessed with it so to have it seem like so far away it was super demoralizing which I, I know a lot of you guys can probably relate to like you see it seems like your dreams are so far away but then I got more to tell you guys because a lot of cool stuff happens because of this and I just want you guys to know that if you're struggling through something too dude same thing like you, you're gonna get so much more out of it than you even know yeah so I, like I said I was like in my car like I'm literally almost crying at like 17 years old because I couldn't throw 80 but this isn't when I quit I, I I doubled down like I said I obsessed I kept going I said I know I wasn't even quitting wasn't even like an option I was like I'm gonna get back to where I was and then I'm gonna go beyond that and then that summer I, I did okay I was like 80 to 82 I got a little bit of velo back and I was playing with NEB again a really good organization I was pretty much there on the success I had the year before when I wasn't hurt I got shelled in like every tournament or walked people like I, my arm just did not feel good I was in pain all the time I was like doing everything I could doing plyos every single day doing bands just like 
borderline overtraining probably. And then by July, I had some elbow problems because I was probably, you know, um, uh, overcompensating was the word I was trying to think of. Overcompensating, my elbow started to hurt. So July, I just shut down, going into my senior season. Um, oh, and at this point I had a few like D3 offers, a few D2 offers from like local schools. My first ever offer was around COVID, a D3 school called Trinity College in Connecticut offered me and that was my first ever like real offer. And then from there, it was like smaller schools like, like Babson is another one around here, UMass Boston. Um, as another one, Austin, like these like really solid programs that recruit mostly local. So that's like the interest I was getting. But for whatever reason, just like, again, I was like D1 or bust mindset. So like, I didn't even like think, consider those as options. And I was like D1, D1, and uh, cause I'm gonna hit 90. And if I'm, if I'm gonna hit 90, I should be able to go D1. So that was like, I was a little naive obviously then, but um, you know, kept going, kept moving. And then I just started obsessively training at this place called 603 Evo, about 10 minutes down the road, the best baseball training facility in the world. I am a little biased because I was there when they built it, but those are my guys. It's Carson and Logan who I talked about earlier. And that's where I spent like 90% of my time. Like it was either doing that or just making like little TikToks and YouTube videos and stuff like that. Cause that's kind of where all my time has been spent, either baseball or YouTube. But I grinded, got it finally back up to like 82, 83, maybe touching 84 by spring. But dude, like something happened that spring. I think I, oh, my girlfriend and I had broken up. So I was like all in my head, my arm started hurting again. And I literally had like the worst season ever. The senior year of high school, I had like a four, five or four, six ERA, which if you remember sophomore year, I had like a 0.5. So I had like a four, five in senior year, which isn't, you know, not a good trend. And at that point it was like, Season ended, we did, we underperformed a ton. We went like seven and 10. We were supposed to be like a really good team. And I was just like, man, I'm not really like loving this anymore. Like this meaning baseball. Like I just like wasn't really happy with where I was at. I wasn't getting joy out of the game anymore. I feel like I had put so much into it and gotten like nothing in return, which now I look back on it as a stupid mindset, but at the time that's what it felt like. I had gotten nothing in return. In reality, I've gotten so much, but you know, again, you don't realize that at the time. And then during season, I kind of committed to doing a post-grad year. Cause again, I wasn't getting the offers that I was really excited about. Um, but yeah, like I got a really good offer to play D1 school, Stonehill uh, in Massachusetts. I think I even got scholarship money. I think I got like a 12% offer or something, which for baseball, you know, they don't really give a ton of money. So that was like a good deal. But anyway, back to what I was saying about Bridgeton. So I committed to a post-grad school called Bridgeton Academy in Maine in about May or June, I called up who was gonna be my coach at, uh, at Bridgeton. And I was pretty much saying like, I'm not really like digging this whole baseball thing anymore. I wanted to like kind of pick your brain about it because I just wasn't feeling it. Like I didn't know if I wanted to quit. I thought quitting would be the dumbest thing ever. But I also felt like playing and doing something that I just didn't like felt like I loved anymore was also pretty stupid. So it was kind of like a crossroads. As you can see, like I grew a mustache. This is when I first started growing out my facial hair and I went from like a baby face to like just oh, oh, grown everything. So like it was a very transformative like three months of me just figuring out like, do I play baseball? Why do I have a mustache right now? Like, what am I, you know, what's going on? I lost like 15, I was like super skinny then too. I lost like 15 pounds. So luckily coach Isaac from Bridgeton kind of said, hey, let me set you up with this travel ball team. You can pitch as many or as little innings as you want, but just, you know, get seen in front of some coaches, keep throwing. And then I was like, all right, I'll do that. And then I kept training and that's my mindset really shifted to, oh man, I care so much that I just don't want to care anymore to that screw it, I'm just gonna have fun and play the game that I've always loved, you know, which was a really good mindset shift that I needed because I'd kind of burnt myself out with the mindset of obsess, obsess, obsess. So when I shifted to like, let's just have fun and try as hard as I can and not care about the results, just, just say screw it and just have fun, which is hard, but it's what I, I had to do. Everything kind of shifted and I had way more fun. I was throwing like 84, 85 that summer and I was only like 170 pounds. So like I felt good, I was light and getting some local offers. I had another one from St. Peter's, which is like a D1 school down in New Jersey. Um, and then some cool like D2 schools offered me, but we went on a family vacation in August of 2021, that summer before Bridgeton, and it was to California. And then once I went out to California, I'd never been there before, my whole kind of mindset shifted to like, bro, I will play NAIA, I will play D3, D2, D1, whatever. I just wanna be in California, specifically Southern California, cause I just love Los Angeles and San Diego and that area. I just shifted my whole thought process to like, let's use baseball to get me somewhere I wanna be, which was Southern California. And I started doing the vlogs again. At this point I had taken a break from making YouTube videos for like six months again I was kind of in like a pretty depressed period and just like trying to figure things out so I just like stopped using social media I stopped like po making videos even like I used to just make videos for fun and I stopped even doing that so when I got to Bridgeton I was like let's you know let's bring the let's do vlogs let's do like game day stuff and thankfully uh, coach Isaac was very open to like me just filming everything every in the dugout I was having a lot of fun with it and I'd film behind the scenes with the boys and like Chase, we had like a segment called Chase Takeover where my boy Chase would just like talk to the camera 
camera and these videos had like 1500 views 2000 views would have been like really good but it didn't matter like i was still having a lot of fun and slowly growing my social media following like on instagram uh, and youtube especially just to like you know a slightly broader fan base i know there's some of you guys who are still sticking around since then so i appreciate you guys a ton because it's, the content has shifted a lot but yeah i was doing like game day vlogs and just having a really fun time and just all in on training gaining weight trying to throw harder yeah. so, and i committed i forgot to tell you guys i committed to a school called azusa pacific university which is a d2 school um in southern california so the emails the hundreds of emails i sent finally got one back from apu to go out and visit they liked my footage and i committed on the spot once i got there uh, to visit in october of 2021 so it seemed like everything was going really well i was gonna go play baseball um, at a school in southern california and i was having a good time at bridgeton um and everything was going well but then as you guys know something else shifted at that point and i started doing like a podcast and content with my boy joe joe norris from bridgeton and we started doing weekly podcasts and all things baseball because i was still like really trying to grow on instagram really trying to go grow on youtube because i just loved doing that stuff by spring i was doing a game day vlog once a week and i was doing a podcast once a week and doing clips on youtube and instagram and tiktok that were really helping to grow because joe and i would have these crazy hot mostly joe but we'd have these crazy hot takes of just like we talked about all things baseball and it was very niche to like travel baseball world like what us 19 year old baseball players were thinking about and talking about I graduated from Bridgeton was throwing again like 83 84 I was really happy with where I was at but I think once I was done with Bridgeton once I, I graduated and you know we kind of I went back home it was like three or four months to go so I went off to school at APU I said you know screw it again let's go all in on YouTube so I, I stopped I stopped really throwing bullpens I was training a little bit but again just for content like I threw live ABs to King of Juco Eric Sim in July again I was at like 8,000 subscribers at that point I think he just like a DM I sent him or something and I was doing podcasts we had Lance McCullers on the podcast which was like a crazy wow moment and by that point man I, I think I, I had like I was good with baseball like I wasn't like down depressed like I want to quit it was more just like I, I see where my path is now like my I want to make I've, my whole life I've been obsessed over baseball and YouTube and I feel like I was still in getting my share of baseball from doing the YouTube At that point it was just like let's just keep growing let's just keep scaling let's I am sitting on something here that I think is going to be super valuable that I really want to go all in on the tools and the stuff I learned from baseball from age 12 all the way up to age 20 mm. led me to be as confident and as obsessed as I was. So yeah, pretty much I, I decided to go to APU, but not play baseball because I was just gonna throw bullpens and do that for content and just try to scale, scale, scale. Yeah. Eventually I went into APU and I was like, you know, I don't really wanna do college anymore if I'm not gonna be playing baseball. So I left and I dropped out of college and was at like 25,000 subscribers this time last year and kind of had to think back and be like, all right, what's, what's my plan for 2023? And it was do the facility tours, interview really cool people, and then do like kind of viral baseball stuff, which we, we really accomplished. And I started working really closely with my boys, Leo and Tony, who you guys see in all the videos. And we just went from, you know, 25K, 30K to 165K in a year, which is insane. And it's a big thank you to you guys. And yeah, so like now I do YouTube full time. So moral of the story, you know, like baseball taught me so much taught me to obsess over something and even if you don't think you're getting results back or they're taking longer than you think on the back end you're gaining so much more than you could even imagine so i know a lot of you guys have like d1 or bust mindset you want to hit this goal or your whole day's ruined kind of thing like you go into a bullpen saying i'm gonna hit 90 and when you don't hit it the day sucks i get that and that obsession is awesome but i've met so many cool people in the baseball world who aren't necessarily baseball players anymore who are doing insanely successful things because of what baseball taught them or they're MLB players. So like, it's kind of a win-win. So if you just go as hard as you can, training in baseball and then following your other passions, you're gonna get good results. I, I genuinely think so. So just keep, you know, following what you guys wanna do, trust your gut, just keep grinding. Uh, also DM me, if you guys have questions or anything, DM me, uh, I'm always around to answer. Also, speaking of questions, I put on my story the other day for you guys to do a little Q and A. So I'll answer like a few of these questions and then we'll wrap it up. Are you ever gonna pitch again? That's something I wanted to talk about. Yeah, like I, I'm definitely gonna pitch again. I'm definitely gonna start training again this year. I'm already, you know, putting some more work at the gym lifting eating healthier and stuff but i definitely want to start throwing again especially for content because like i got to get a rematch for sim i got i want to face all these i want to face like big leaguers but i don't want to throw like ages yeah. at least compete a little bit um but i think that'd be great content i see sim and, and momentum they do amazing content so yeah i'm definitely gonna start training in a few weeks months yeah I'm, I'm, it's not over so i don't have a 90 around here but the stickers with 90 everywhere they're up they're still up for a reason so how did you get your audience to grow as fast as it did logan asks so yeah yeah, I mean, honestly, like it took a while today, actually, I was looking at this chart of how long I've had my channel. I've had this channel since like I was 11, like 2014, I made this channel and there was no growth, no growth. And I was posting at that time, like Madden Mobile and stuff. And then you see 
boom, this year was like a crazy spike. So I think a big thing was just consistency, like keep showing up and making videos and kind of finding my format. And again, like obsessing kind of nonstop about like how to grow. It's always, it's kind of the thing I've always wanted to do is, is make YouTube videos and be like a YouTuber. So like it's, it's kind of funny that now it's kind of becoming like a real thing. So I'm even more motivated now just to keep going and obsessing and growing and all that kind of stuff. So how did it feel the moment you made the commitment to be a content creator full time? Honestly, it kind of sucked because my parents were very anti that. Like they wanted me to be, I was a baseball player and I was supposed to play college baseball. And my mom wanted to come out and watch my games and you know, she wanted to be a baseball mom. And so that was the toughest thing was my parents seeing me kind of give up on this dream. But in my head, it was like pivoting towards the thing I've, I've always been meant to do, which is making these videos. It was difficult because of the outside kind of perspectives, but it was easy internally. And it was like a big weight off my shoulders to be like, oh, now I'm, all, I'm actually can be all in. I have no excuses, but to make great videos and try to grow on social media. So that part was great. It was like bittersweet. And then my parents have kind of like caught on and they're very proud of me and that, which is really cool. But it, it took some convincing and it took some growing and like I had to really go hard for them to see like, oh, like this could actually be a legit thing. So, you know, bittersweet. I'm losing motivation to play baseball. Do you have any tips that could help? Yeah, dude. Like for me, it was like remembering why I started playing baseball, remembering being that little kid who just loved you know being around the game the success was great too but you can't re rely on the success to make you keep loving the game it's the game itself I guess if that makes sense so you just got to kind of put yourself back in your shoes of whenever you started playing baseball I think and remember who that kid was and why he played and then use that as motivation to keep playing and if you can't find that or you think it's time to pivot and you have like outside motivation to do something else then you gotta like trust your gut but if you think baseball is still for you and you want to keep, keep pursuing it keep going through man you're gonna like you, you'll make a breakthrough but you just gotta be honest with yourself and just trust your gut that was the thing like for me you know like how do I actually feel about this and for me it was like I think I'm done playing baseball and I want to make YouTube videos and so I did it and it kind of sounds crazy but it's starting to pay off so you just gotta you know Trust your gut, be honest with yourself. I'm getting a lot of like, how hard do you throw or what was the fastest you ever threw? So I think the fastest I really ever threw on radar was 85. I hit that a couple times this summer when I was going into my, my post-grad year at Bridgeton. So like I was 18, really like not that fast. For how much I trained and how hard I worked, I did not get much velocity. Cause you know, the injury really sucked. I kept getting hurt, I'm not that big. I'm like 5'11", I was like probably like 175, 180 when I played. So like I wasn't very big, but again, there's guys who are like that tall who throw gas. So for me, like I tried to maximize my genetics as much as I could. Um, I got injured a lot, which sucked. But I think if I kept playing, I could definitely, like even now, like I threw a bullpen a few months ago and I hit 83 a couple times and I had thrown in like six months. So I think just like growing, getting stronger and like being away from the game and not putting so much stress on my arm would definitely make me throw harder. But I'm curious, like I'm only gonna be able to find out once I do it, so we'll see. But yeah, my hardest, man, it was like 85, not very fast, but crafty, crafty lefty which I hate by the way, but I was a crafty lefty. All right, right now, what are your goals? I'll end on this one. So I think my goals right now are just to keep scaling the channel, growing, making great videos for you guys, being more consistent about the quality and the quantity of videos, if that makes sense. So like I wanna make a high quality video every single week, something that you guys haven't seen before, like a tour of a place you guys haven't seen before or a behind the scenes you guys haven't seen or an interview. I, I do wanna do interviews again. So that, all that kind of stuff I wanna do is show like the inside access of the baseball world and explore the baseball world in a way other people aren't doing. Doing. So that's kind of like my, my goals for this year. I don't really have like an objective, like quantitative goal where I'm like, I want to hit a million subs and I want to do it. Like, obviously I want to hit a million subs and get 500,000 views of video and all that stuff. But for me, it's more just about like the process and the system we're building and how can I maximize what we're doing for growth and building more depth with you guys and learning more about who my audience is and what you guys want to see. So let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see next year. But yeah, it's really it, man. Just keep building the system, keep scaling and you know, keep making cool videos. My boys, Tony, Lee, Cam, who does video for us sometimes, and Ezekiel, who does my thumbnails. All you guys, you're the best. So I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, and also, I appreciate you guys for watching the videos and subscribing, commenting. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you had a great 2023. Hope you have an even better 2024. And I'll see you guys next year, very, very soon. Peace.